Um, draining, why? What was that? Why draining? Very physical, a lot of free throws. Yep, um, yeah, a lot of free throws, like 36 and 25. My math isn't real great, but 61 free throws in a game in basketball, 51 fouls caught, it does make it, <laughs> does make it a long game. Um, but really proud of the group in terms of how we responded to getting our butts kicked by Sydney. Um, however long ago that was, five days. You know, we, we played well against Melbourne United for three quarters and then we come in and get a, a win here tonight against I, what I think is a really good basketball team um, who's very, very talented and trying to make the playoffs. Um, so very proud of the group. Um, and in particular, um, our, our role players, like H stood up huge for us tonight, gave us great minutes off the bench. You know, it's only like just under 10 minutes, but just his calmness offensively, his facilitation from the high post was, was great. Tyrell, I thought, was really good. Um, <clears throat> you know, Jace Kadi, obviously, with, with 28. Um, you know, when we needed energy, um, we got it from the right places. So, um, yeah, really, really happy for the group to get that win and, and grind it out against a really good team um, through a bit of adversity. Like, we got our butts kicked on the boards and... Um, you know, they shot a lot of free throws. Like our foul discipline wasn't um, wasn't great, and but we, you know, they're four twenty four from the three, so we did a good job with defending the three point line and, and sticking to the game plan and, and what we wanted to achieve in that game. You showed a lot of resolve in that United game. Um, you got the outcome this time, showing the same resolve, you know, going up against adversity. Um, did you feel like that was coming, and is this the sort of team that you think that this team is on paper? Yeah, look, if you look at us on paper, we're as good as any team in the NBL. Like, there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, we, we've had adversity throughout the year, but so has everyone. Everyone's had injuries. Everyone's had tough schedules. You know, that was our third game in five days. I think uh, talking to Simon pregame, uh, these guys are about to play three games in six days or whatever it is. So everyone's had adversity and it's the responses to it, um, which make or break what your season is. And tonight, um, there was a really good response to adversity. You know, we go into the half up seven. They make a run, you know, in the past we've we've kind of just found ways to dig ourselves a deeper hole. But tonight we managed the game, we found a level of calmness, we found a group that, that functioned really well defensively and was able to grind out and get stops. Um, so, yeah, really pleasing in terms of the response to adversity. Aaron got that technical and then he didn't play again. How did he respond to not playing? And then how proud were you of guys like Tyrell, guys like Harry? Just yeah. Up and I mean, if you look at Banger's energy on the bench and his talk, like, there's, it's positive, right? Like he's up and about in the group. He's given advice to guys like H. Like, I don't see it all, but Harry can probably comment more to it um, in terms of he remained connected with the group. He remained positive. You know, he's still coaching from the sidelines. He's coming to me. He's giving me advice in terms of subs and and what he's seeing because he, he's he's been around a, a long time, so he knows what he's talking about. Um, so yeah, like pleasing in terms of it wasn't things didn't go his way tonight and that happens he was great against United the other night he has 21-11 tonight things didn't go his way but other people stepped up DJ was good Harry was good Tyrell was good Gak gave us good minutes you know we, we found other guys to contribute um, to, to plug the hole that was was left by by Banks so yeah really happy but also happy with his, his response to some adversity for himself in terms of how he stayed positive with the group it's great the, uh, the game seemed to turn around in that second quarter when Aaron did go off. Uh, what was the message uh, when you, you had that time out? I think you would have put together maybe a 8-2 run or something like that to take back the lead. Um, what was your message to the boys at that point? Yeah, like one of the things pre-game that we spoke about was just trying to find pace in the game. Um, and in the third quarter when we got bugged down, we were walk up, walk up, walk up, you know, set heavy. Second quarter, there was pace in the game. You know, there's cutting, there's movement, there's extra passes. You know, we, we really targeted a, some key matchups in that game that we were able to exploit. So I think in, in terms of what we found was a group who, who played, there was energy in the ball, um, but what it was built on the back of was getting stops. You know, we were able to string together, you know, three, four, five, six stops consecutively, rebound the ball, and, and that generates pace for this group, which is which is how we built that seven-point buffer at halftime. And it was a big quarter, too. It was a 30.4 the best quarter of the season. Um, did you rate that as your probably your best quarter that you've played this season? Yeah, certainly. Like, haven't had a chance to really reflect on it, but yeah, 30 points and just the way we played. Like, I think we played with the right intent on both sides of the basketball, so it's the game's easy um, when everybody's involved in it and everybody's connected to it and when you build it on the back of your defence. Um, you know, the energy it takes to play defence that way um, is a lot, and it's you talked the, the word draining, um, you know, but 
it, it gives you energy to, to keep going in terms of the communication, what we're doing tactically on the pick and roll, like Creek is an issue in the middle of the floor with, with Brown. So, you know, we, we kind of got our butts kicked on that early, but we made some adjustments and we were able to negate their effectiveness in the mid pick and roll um, for the, most of the rest of the game. So, um, yeah, really pleased in, in that second quarter and, and that's what built the momentum. And we've been in that situation where we've been down and once you get down, it takes a lot to dig out of holes. And I think Phoenix used a lot of energy like and you know, um, to get back on top of us. And then when we had our second push, did they have enough juice left in the tank? Like they also haven't played in, you know, however long, nine days or eight days or whatever it is. So we've been a team that's been playing every second, third day for a little while now. So maybe there's just a rhythm thing for them that they're gonna rediscover in the next couple of couple of games. Harry, just carrying on from <coughs> what Greg said about Bainsey, I think you hadn't checked in yet. I think it was early in the second quarter or late in the first, and there was a bit of an animated conversation from Aaron. Can you give us a bit of insight into what he was talking to you about during that time here? Yeah, he's sort of just talking about being high on the on balls and um, just little things with the box outs and stuff like that, sort of just basic stuff. But, I mean, it's just huge for us with Bainsey. Like, yeah, he wants to play big minutes, and obviously there's games he's going to play big minutes, but... You know, it's pretty easy with the position we're in and once you've lost a few and, you know, the season's not done, but once you can't make playoffs and all that sort of stuff, like, it's easy to turn on each other and um, not be up and about for each other and just play the wrong way. So um, with Bainsey leading it from the bench, and we've, we've, been, we've become susceptible to that a couple of games where guys drop their heads and we turn on each other a little bit, but we're out here playing basketball, like, we all love it. We've got a great group, like, I'm, you wouldn't think that this team would be the position we are right now, like, in turn, if you just looked at the characters and the guys in the group, like there's a bunch of good dudes. No one's, there's no bad eggs. It's all good. So um, it's just good to have a guy like Bainsey leading that. And when he leads it, like the whole bench is up and about. Everyone's talking. Everyone's playing the right way. Didn't go our right, uh, way with some things, some calls, some refs. So um, just staying on top of each other and um, really maintaining um, that positivity is huge. And I think when Bainsey leads it, it's, it's big. The discussions in the group, what? What is it from here? Not many games left of the season, and I guess not a heap to achieve in terms of making finals and all that sort of thing. But is it to try and impact on the finals? What do what the discussions talk to us about that? Yeah, I mean, we all got to look at each other, look at each other, and say, why did you start playing basketball? You know, play because you love it. You play because it's a career, it's a privileged career to have, and. Um, we're coming to ruin guys' seasons. You know, we're coming to ruin other teams' seasons. That's what it is. Like, we're not coming out here. We're not just going to. We don't want to just be a pushover. We don't want to get lose by 30. Like, we're not going out here and trying to do that. Like, it hurts the guys. Like, we have those big losses. Like, guys aren't like, oh, we don't care. Like, it hurts the guys. Like, the guys are emotional in the locker room afterwards. So, um, yeah, we're going to try to come out and put our best, best foot forward and hopefully um, build something leading into the off season. So. Um, we were just talking about Jace again. Um, it looked like they made a concerted effort to keep the ball out of his hands and mm. make Sobe or um, Sobe the, the primary playmaker. Yep. How did you work through that and go, okay, we want to get we want to get Jace off the leash? And I mean, he's, he's had a huge game. It looked mm. like he just <clears throat> got to the hole so easily. Yeah, um, the thing about Jace, like he had 16 at the half time. At the half, he finishes with 28, and he sat for like the first almost six minutes of the fourth, and we played Rasmus, and Jace is happy to see other people succeed. Like, before, like, even talk about how we got him loose or whatever it was, but, like, Jace is sitting over there and I went to put him in once and he's like, no, don't put me back in. Like, this group is rolling, they're defending, like, Rasmus is doing a great job, stay with him. And, like, that's, and Harry touched on it, but the group's happy for each other to have success. And I think that's, like, case in point tonight. Like, Bangers doesn't play a whole lot. He's happy for Tyrell and Harry to have the success. And DJ and Gak, like, Jace is happy to sit on the bench and, watch his teammates succeed and help them navigate through it when things get hard. So, um, but in terms of like, yeah, they, they did a good job in the second half in, in trying to take the ball out of Jason's hands and make someone else, else make plays. But the beauty of this group is you take it out of Jason's hands and now it's in Sobey's hands. He's pretty good going downhill. Now it's in Tyler Johnson's hands. He's, you know, he's got one of the best like in-between games in the league. Like his, his decision-making and his floaters and his touch around the rim is, is, is unbelievable. So, like, he only has eight points on two or ten shooting, but I think he had three or four, like, go in and out, right? Like, right around the rim. So and he's plus 12. Yeah, plus 12 in 26 minutes, and Harry's plus 13 in nine minutes. So, um, yeah, I, I think going back to it, yeah, okay, you want to try and cut the head off the snake with Jace, well, someone else is going to make plays and make good decisions. And I think we found um, a rhythm with that tonight, and, yeah, really pleased with the group that they were able to, to navigate their way through it. You're not down here in Melbourne again, but you know, I know you've still got a couple of games left, but can you talk to us a little bit about how you're feeling personally about what's coming ahead and, 
and you know, is this an audition for you? How, how are you looking at it? Do you want to coach long term? Coach the club long term? Yeah, look, I, I mean, that decision will be left in the hands of the club. Like, I would be lying if I said I wasn't, didn't have an appetite for it. Um, when it's my time to have that opportunity, and it's it somehow happened to be my time at the moment, um, and, and I'm loving the, the challenge. Like, it's it's a lot to navigate through, and um, you know, keep a group that is not going to play playoff basketball in, engaged. And I think the guys have done a great job of responding every time we we hit a wall. We talk about it, we watch the film, we get back to practice and we, we keep coaching, like, and they keep playing hard. So, um, yeah, for me, like, whatever decision the club makes and there's a process that the club will go through and, you know, whether or not I, I get an opportunity to do this moving forward, I, I don't know. Um, I'm invested in my career as a, as a basketball coach, so um, whatever lies ahead for me um, is what it is. And... You know, if I get a chance, then great, and I'll make the most of it as I'm as I'm doing now, um, <clears throat> and enjoying the ride on the day to day. But uh, like I said, the club will will go through their process and make those decisions um, as we move towards the end of the season into the off season. Now there's nothing on Zoom, so all good. Cheers. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks,